A very pleasant good morning to everyone. What a pleasure it is to be worshiping with you once again. I give God thanks for his mercy, give him thanks for his grace, for his keeping care, for watching over us while we slept and for waking us up this morning. We serve a mighty God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can think or imagine. And so it makes sense for us to commit our ways to him. It makes sense that early in the morning we seek his face. And so this morning I extend a very special welcome to those of you who have joined us here for another morning devotion. If you're joining us on the various social media platforms, whether live or later on, you will listen to this broadcast. We extend to you a warm welcome and we invite you to feel and to know that the Spirit of the Lord is in this place. And may you not leave here without having experienced the blessing that God has in store for you. For those who are joining us via radio this morning, good morning and welcome to another morning devotion. We sincerely pray that God's blessing will be outpoured upon you. And whatsoever the reason is, whether you got here by invitation or whether by you just came across this link, I want you to know that it's not by accident, it's not by choice, that it's not by luck that you're here. But God has a message in store for you. And uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Sister Erica. Again, good morning, everyone. I greet you on um, the platform this morning to our Bay Hill Newsnet and Concordia radio listeners. I greet you also, along with those who will listen later on YouTube and um, Facebook. I greet everyone this morning in the precious name of Jesus. I give God thanks that one more time he has given me this opportunity to experience life. And I'm back on this platform where I know that I receive such encouragement each time. This week, we are starting a new theme. It's taken from Galatians 5 and verse 1. And it reads, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. So here the Apostle Paul, he's speaking to the Galatian Christians, and he's reminding them about the freedom that they know they have in Christ, where that freedom comes from. And now he is saying, I want you to remember this, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ had made us free. He's reminding them that the freedom they have, it is not coming from anybody else but Christ himself. It's not works because they couldn't work to pay for this. It's not from, um, you know, trying to pay their way in. They were in this hopeless condition, sin, and now they have this newfound freedom that comes through Christ and Christ alone. When the Lord saw us, and so let us think about us in this time. The Lord saw us in our condition. We were hopeless. We were helpless. We couldn't help ourselves. But God, in his great mercy, he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. Died, buried, rose again from the dead. And now he is sitting at God on his right hand, making intercessions for us. And it is through that sacrifice that Christ made, that we now have this freedom that we can come to the Lord. We can pray. We can seek his face. We can, you know, we have audience with him when we think about who we were before we got saved. And when we think about who God is, and we actually can literally go before God ourselves and talk to him through Christ. It is indeed a wonderful thing. And we have this sense of freedom now where we are not bound to do anything or anything at all that the old slave master that we have, the old task master that we had, Satan, that had us doing all these things. Even if we wanted to stop, we couldn't. 
So Paul is saying to us, now that we have this liberty, now that we have tasted this freedom, the weight of sin is no longer there. The burden, the shame, the disgrace, the, you know, having to hide or whatever we used to do because we were so embarrassed about something. There is no need for that. We can stand fast in this liberty. Stand firm. Stand firm on Christ, our solid rock. Let us not waver. Let us not try to go back. Let us not retreat. But let us now live this life in obedience to the word of God because we are free. And then he wants us, he's saying, stay free. He went on to encourage us to say, be not entangled again. We're going to look at that word again with the yoke of bondage. Don't get tangled, twisted, knotted, bound again. Because that's how we were before Christ entered our life, our existence. That is what we were. We were bound and tied up in sin. But because Christ had made us free and we have tasted the freedom and we all know that the freedom is good. We taste it and we love it. Paul is saying to us this morning, don't go back into that lifestyle again. Do not get entangled again. That word again. Don't go back there. Stay free, live free, because we have this freedom in Christ. We're not working for salvation. We couldn't work. Paul reminded us it's a gift. It's not of work, works, lest anybody should boast. So now that we are here, we are free. Paul is saying, do not get ourselves twisted, knotted, bound up again in sin. Do not go back to that old taskmaster. He doesn't have anything good to offer us. Whatever he's giving, it is going to be cause spiritual death. Our relationship that we have with Christ right now, it is going to be a mess if we go back, get entangled again in the yoke of bondage. And the yoke is this device that farmers use. I believe they probably still use it, use them in some countries to bind two oxen together, maybe more. And what they are using them to do, plow their ground. And when they use them, if the oxen decide that they don't want to move, they whip them and they're not going to stop until they move and plow the ground. Which one of us? want to get into that state where the enemy bound us again, bind us up again, and start to drive us to do sinful things, live a life that is not pleasing to the Lord. Who wants to get entangled with bondage again? I don't believe any of us want to. And when I think of being entangled, I think of the whale massive, beautiful creature. They can launch themselves out of the water and land with this massive splash. And yet and still, if they get tangled up into a fisherman's net, all that massive power that they have, it is rendered of no effect. And if someone doesn't come alongside and help them to free them from that net, that whale will surely die. And it's the same with us. The Lord has set us free. And if we should get back all knotted up with sin again, what's going to happen? Again, like I said before, spiritual death is a sure thing to happen. And so the Lord, um, Paul, he is encouraging us today to make sure that now that we are free, let us stay free. Don't get bound up again in all these things that we know does not please the Lord. Now, I know that there are some folks who believe, you know, they have the power and the wherewithal that if they get into sin or whatever, you know, they can just come back out and everything will be good. But my question is this. If we should get that careless and think like that, what would happen if in that moment the Lord should put in his appearance? What would happen if in that moment <clears throat> the Lord decide to call us home? What will happen then? So I believe it is so important for us not to take chances like that. 
Sometimes we may feel the pressure of life, the cares of life. And we may think that, you know, in order for me to get ahead, in order for me to accomplish this, I have to compromise here and I have to look a little bit of compromising over there. I, you know, I might walk the line and all these things we believe we need to do or we think we may have to do just so we can get ahead. <clears throat> but we are forgetting that we have this liberty, this freedom that we can approach our God and we can ask him for whatever it is that we need. And knowing that God has our plan, knowing that he loves and cares for us so much that we are assured that if this thing is in his will for us, he will grant it unto us in his time. So there is no need for us to believe that I have to compromise, I have to do other, otherwise just so I can get ahead in this life, just so that I can accomplish something. It, that, that is not how we need to go about this. We need to remember that the Lord has set this thing up in such a way that we can always go to him freely and receive whatever it is he has to give us, whatever he believes is best for us. And so I look at a scripture that Peter wrote in Second Peter chapter 2, and it says, For if after they have escaped the pollution of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome, and later, um, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandments delivered unto them. But it is happened unto them according to the true proverb, the Lord, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallow, wallowing in the mire. So um, the apostle Peter, he just summed it up nicely. That is after you have experienced the wonderfulness of God, after we have experienced and tasted and see how good he is, if we now go back, Paul, Peter is saying the latter end is worse than the first. And the description in the last verse about the dog going back to his vomit. How gross is that? And not just that, the pig, you wash him clean and he gone to wallow into the mire, into the dirt again. It's just showing us what we would be like if we should go back into sin, live that life after God has delivered us. And so this morning, I encourage each of us, including me, let us do everything in our powers. Let us do everything by God's grace. Stand firm. Stand firm. Don't move. Don't shift from this wonderful freedom that God has granted unto us. After we have tasted and seen how good and wonderful God is, let us endeavor, purpose in our hearts to stay in this way. And don't get back into that miserable state that we were in before salvation reached us, before we experienced salvation. Because if we do not continue in this pathway, our end will not be good. It will not be pretty when we stand before the Lord. Because if we are expecting to hear, well done, we are going to be so sorry. And so disappointed because I believe we will hear the part I know you not. And so I remind us again, let us stand therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free and be not entangled again in the, with the yoke of bondage. At this time, I'm going to call this. Amen and amen. Shalom, shalom, people of God. Indeed, this morning we are so grateful to God for yet another opportunity to be gathered in this fashion. It is not 
a right, but indeed it is a privilege. I just want to honor the presence of the Lord with us this morning. Indeed, he is a good, good father. He is the giver of life. He is, you know, the the our alpha, our omega. In him we live, in him we move, and in him we have our being. And we just want to honor him this morning for the God that he is to us this this morning, we're just so grateful that we have truly experienced his love to know that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. And even in our folly, he continues to show us his mercies. So we would proceed with our parting verse, Psalm 19 and the verse 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Have a blessed day, people of God. And as you go forth today, take the word with you, remembering that you are light and you are salt and that you are to bring hope to those who are in darkness, that you are not to rest until you see those that are around you come to know him as Lord and Savior, remembering that you are his ambassador and that you are to represent him well. Have a blessed day, everyone.